Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derber with your family at Faith Victory Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And just delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1 37 says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And we are continuing in our special edition of Testimonies. And with us in the studio, with us, with us, we got Eric over here, myself, so that's the us. And Jesus is here. Mm -hmm. With us, we have Mercy Aswala. Mercy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was a joy <laughs> yeah. uh, listening to your transparent uh, life mm -hmm. thus far yesterday. And if, you, and if you missed yesterday's program, go back and uh, find that mm -hmm. and uh, because uh, she was very candid about uh, what had happened in her life and uh, we got into a lot of detail uh, in that testimony mm -hmm. but we ran out of time to get you to where you are now <laughs> yes sir so uh, just in recapping uh, you uh, came to uh, Frankfurt to go to Kentucky State University. Yes, sir. And in all that, uh, y you met a, a man, got mm -hmm. pregnant, mm -hmm. got married, found out you had twins. Yes. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, a third one came along. Right. And then you had the shock of your life, mm -hmm. finding out that uh, he was not faithful. Right. Ended in a divorce. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And we all we looked at that yesterday. How you uh, made it through all that. Yeah. With the body of Christ support. Yes. yes thank and you. And your Lord. personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. And we left off uh, yesterday with uh, you had gotten a job mm -hmm. and you gotten a vehicle. Yep. And you were making three hundred dollars every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, knocking it down. Knocking it down. <laughs> right? with, oh goodness. With three kids to feed, sir. Rent yeah. to pay, mm -hmm. gas to put in mm -hmm. the car, yep. all that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's pick it up from there. Okay. Uh, one thing that uh, you mentioned yesterday uh, was you never stopped loving God right never stopped coming to church right never stopped praying right never stopped but walking in the word mm -hmm. right right now I know women that a situation like that drove them crazy right and they ended up uh Finding somebody to babysit the kids, hit the bars, mm -hmm. looking for a man, Absolutely. or just you know just trying right. to drink it away or what? You, you didn't do none of that. Nope, I didn't. You stayed. You stayed right with the word. Yep, I ran to the refuge. <laughs> yeah. Strong tower. Yes, my strong tower. So, so yeah, uh, take us from that three hundred dollar a week job. Okay. To where you are now. All right. So, like I said, I was making three hundred dollars every two weeks. Now, in the midst of that, I'm I'm tithing. <laughs> I have missions that I give. I think it was maybe ten dollars a month, but you know, I, I had okay. to start somewhere. So That's I was giving right. missions because my God shall supply all my needs right. according to His right. riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, um, I just was at that place where I felt like the Lord was literally taking care of me. I told you that some people had given me a vehicle and, you know, things like that. But I knew in order for me to progress, I didn't want to just stay and, you know, barely survive, survive exactly, barely get along street. I wanted to go all the way in God. And mm -hmm. at this point, I'm divorced. I've got these kids and I've got to think about their future. I don't want them to go through the same huh. cycle that I was on. Poverty. Poverty, sir. Deep, utter poverty. So one thing in particular is that I was on, um, you know, I had been on food stamps and all that kind of stuff, you know, any type of government assistance. But Section I remember, uh -huh, I remember having this terrible feeling like, 
I don't want this, you know? And, you know, I was, of course, the counsel was, you, you need this. You're in a position where you need it. But on the inside, I knew I had shifted. I made a change where I didn't want any government That's your assistance. divine nature, right? Exactly. Rising up. Yes, sir. So I was just, as I was getting in the word, I was just getting stronger, getting more revelation. Of course, we're in a prosperity church, so there were challenges coming out. I never missed a challenge, mm. whether it was just a dollar. Sometimes I'd sit there, you know, and under my breath, I said, Lord, you give seed to the sower and somebody would, you know, slip a $5 bill, mm. you know, behind me. But that's me still using my faith. They're right. giving it to me, but right. they are not giving it to everybody else around me. And then you take that and put it and in. And I take challenge. that and put it in the offering, you know, seal the word or whatever was coming out. So um, there were a couple of really detrimental times where things were looking real bad. You know, I think we had got behind on our rent, you know, for a couple of months and the people were, you know, threatening with evictions. And then, you know. I think you had called an offering, you know, we're going to take care of our single mother today. And, mm. you know, I have been praying and believing God, like, Lord, you know, you're taking care of me supernaturally. I'm, I'm obedient to you. I'm a tither, you know, um, and you took up an offering and it was, you know, up enough money to pay up the rent. Not, you know, I put it on there. I put it up there for now, a couple of months ahead. <laughs> you didn't come to me no. and say, oh, I'm a bit behind. No, 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 no. It no, was no. just something spontaneous. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, nothing that you even knew was going on in my life, you know. Um, and just to say with that, I mean, we were never... I feel like, like I said, the Lord was supernaturally taking care of us, but it wasn't because I was special. If anything, I was not special. I was, you know, the least of them all to have been, you know, taken care of, but I knew it was my faith. It wasn't because I just had a relationship with you. I didn't know you outside of the Word of God. It wasn't because I had, you know, I was just this, you know, friendly person and everybody wanted to do something for me. It was because a I was case. going, exactly. I was going to God. I was believing God. I was sowing seed. I was continually, you know, like I said, being faithful to mission. And um, I actually partnered with you, you know, back that, then. I was waiting on that. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting on that. Mm -hmm. So you found out about partnership. I did. And me and Mama Alberta, debt free. Yes. Living in abundance, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> and you know how we live. I do. Right? And so you you found out about partnership. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you're a single mama. Yep. Three kids. Mm -hmm. You're tithing. Mm -hmm. You're giving the missions. Yeah. Now you're partnering. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I remember you and Miss Alberta had said that you, I think you said you took 30% or something we maybe did. at the very beginning. And so I grabbed a hold of it and I said, well, Lord, my 30% may be 10, 10, 10, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm making that so. million three hundred dollars So right. it's like, okay, Lord, well, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm mm -hmm. going to get my partnership. I'm going to get my missions. I'm going to tithe. And that's going to be the beginning of it, you mm -hmm. know, and you're going to take me up from there. So, um, Things were happening, you know, we were supernaturally being taken care of. And like I said, that desire to get off of all government assistance was there. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what message it was, but I think you preached on something. Of course, we were sealing every word. And it might have been fresh oil uh, uh, years ago when you preached mm -hmm. on that one. Um, and I just, I was like, Lord, I want a new job. I want something better for me and these kids. I don't want us to just, you know, be in this little apartment. It's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's. You know, we're making it, but it's barely enough. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I got an interview at the state, um, at a, a position here at the state. Um, and in Frankfurt, we have state jobs or state positions. And so I got an interview. I went into this interview, Pastor, and I don't even know if you know this part. The lady that was doing the interview was a woman that went to this church. She was the head over the interview panel. It was probably seven other people, and she's sitting at the head of the table, and I could just go in there, and I mean, it was just like, Lord, no, you I just opened the gates for me here. So I got a position making three times more than I was making, you know, at that job. I, I got a position at the state, and it was just like, you know, we thought we were just big time then. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we yeah. got it going on. So, of course. Moving on up. Moving on up. So immediately, I was still eligible, you know, because I had, three children. I was a single mother and my income, the way the state looked at it or the government looked at it rather, I was still eligible for some of those financial benefits, mm. but I cut it all off. I mm. said, I'm done. I don't wait want minute, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, you're still eligible. Yes. Yes. But you cut it off. Yes, sir. I called them. I said, I'm not coming back to those appointments where you make me sit in the heart line and wait. Of course, I wasn't rude, but I just knew in myself that that's it's not done. what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I got off of that, totally stayed off of that, you know, since then. And the kids got bigger. They eat more. Yeah. <laughs> so I just started doing little things like that. Like, Lord, you're taking care of me and I'm going to make you be my, you know, financial advisor here. What do you say do? We're getting off that. What are we doing next? Um, so I got that position at the state and that was looking good. 
Um, and I just, after that, I wanted to shift and get into the school system because my children were still pretty young and summer times, you know, they're out of school and I'm a single mom. I either have to pay for daycare or send them to grandma's house. And I just didn't want to miss that time with them. So I got in, I left that position, um, divinely, you know, instructed by the Lord. Of course I got counsel, you know, and I got a position at the school and I feel like I might've made a little bit less, but financially nothing changed. Mm. We were still off of government assistance. All the bills were still being paid. And I've always been like that. I've always paid my bills right on time or ahead of time. And are you still in the, in the apartment? No, at this point I have moved to, um, I think I moved to a little house. Um, oh, maybe it's a little bit further from downtown, maybe on the east side of town, moved to a little house there. But then I got Another, 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 you know, thing came open where there was another house available. And I called, what happened is I called this company that they own a lot of rental properties. And I said, you know, this is how much I want to pay. Do you have something in this range? I'd like to have maybe three bedrooms. They send me to this house, sir, and it's three stories, four bedrooms. And they're like, oh, it's old. And so it's not that much. And I mean, I'm just like, I'm looking through these doors like I'm a kid in a candy store. Like, yeah. what is this? What? Yeah. I mean, it's huge. And the price I pay now, I tell people today, and they're just, I mean, literally, they fall out. We so had a this group, is the house you're in now? The house that I'm in now, yeah. So I had a, a group from Florida. This is a single out. mama. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. This is a single mama, and I don't forget that. <laughs> it's true. So I was just saying that a group from Florida came up, and they actually toured my house. And they were just all like, oh, this is so nice. This is so nice. And I told them the price, and they were just like, what? You know, in Florida, the cost of living is yeah, probably way yeah. more. But anyways, that just to say that it's supernatural, that it's been there. And it's because I've been faithful there, sure. you know, and not on my own. It's because I've been faithful to God that he's been faithful to me to help me do that. Harvest. Um, absolutely. Yes, sir. The harvest. So a faithful man will abound in blessings. Mm. So mm -hmm. um, I, I got that. You know, I was at that state job where I was making three times more. But then I went to that the school position because I wanted to be in the school system so that when the kids are off, I'm off. You know, if there's mm. a snow day, we're all off together. We're off during the summers. Mm. And so that was working out. But there was still, you know, on the inside, I'm wanting more. And it's not financially wanting something more. I'm wanting more of what God has for me. Sure. I want to provoke people to jealousy. I want people to know how good God is. Like you said, most single women, they run to another man or they run to a bar or they run to something else. And not that I, you know, didn't want another relationship, but I or was... Or they run to a career. Or run to a career. You're right, sir. That's true. And I wanted them to see what I was doing in God and say, I want to run to God. As an ambassador. As an ambassador, exactly. And not that I was, you know, I didn't have those things in my mind while I was doing it, but in my heart, I knew, you know, this is mm -hmm. going to be, this is God's work. He's doing this, mm -hmm. you know? So, um... I was working at that school system and things were just going along just fine and we're in this new house and now the kids are getting a little bit older. And, yeah, you know, sure. cost of living is dramatically increasing. They bigger want these nice keys. shoes. Yeah, <laughs> bigger shoes, nicer shoes. You know, I tell my son, I just make a joke like, you know, you're the first person who gave me a pair of J Michael Jordan shoes because I bought them for him and then, you know, he grew out of them and turned around and gave them to me. They were my size. So I'm like, you know, I just, there were certain things like, you know, uh, single mothers and single fathers and any parent, they know about this. There's something called a spirit pack. And that's when you go to play basketball, the, the kids, you know, you've talked about that before where mm -hmm. you need your Converse. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't need Converse. They need Nikes. They need the blazer. They need the jackets. They need the whole sweatsuit. They oh, need really? all this stuff. Yes. So, you parents, know, parents and the pay. parents have to pay for it. And okay. I think that spirit pack was maybe $250, you know, every season. So I remember talking to some of my friends. They're like, oh my God, you know, what are we going to do about the spirit pack? And I'm like, oh yeah, mine's already paid for. And it was, you know, it was just because God was supernaturally providing. I always had the money just available to do what we needed to do. And I'm looking around like if I start calculating, you know, how David numbered the children. Like if I start calculating, I don't know how this is going to happen. Right, how right. am I really being sustained here? And I know it was supernatural increase. Mm -hmm. I mean, God was just blessing what I was doing that mm -hmm. that little bit. He was multiplying it. Um, so you, you have this job. So I have this job. And then... Um, I just, I was at that position and then they asked me, they just called me, uh, the school system that I was involved in, and they said, would you, would you be willing to substitute at the board office now the, the, the over the district, all the schools there in our district, they, they have a board office and they wanted me to substitute as receptionist. And of course I was like, yeah, you know, no problem. So I come in there to substitute and they end up hiring me full time and the, in another department over human resources, like the hiring department. So here I Is am. Is that now, a promotion that's financially? That's a big financial promotion. So here I am, I'm actually teaching, not just, um, 
that it's a financial possession uh, promotion. It's a it's it's a rank. Uh, promotion because I was a substitute and now I'm over the substitutes. I'm teaching substitute teachers. So you went from here yeah, to-, to above. Exactly. So I'm promoted above. Um, and then, and that kind of fast forwards things to maybe 2019. The kids are getting ready to graduate. So the kids meaning twins. My younger one is still in high school um, or in middle school, getting ready to go to high school. The twins are getting ready to graduate and I've got some serious decisions to make here. It's like, okay, what are you all going to do? You know, I've got to help you. I want to support you. And if you're going to get a job, if you're going to get an apartment, you know, what's our next College. Steps? College, exactly. So we take the whole summer um, before in their their junior year going into their senior year and we just pray and seek the Lord. And I made a vow and I told them, we're going to make this together, kids. We're going to get a thousand dollar vow and we're going to believe God for your future, whatever those plans may be. A thousand dollar vow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now you've heard me and mama talk about vow ever yes. since you've been in this church. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And, uh, I was born again out of vow. Yeah, you were. And so on and so forth. Yep. So you and the kids pray. Mm -hmm. You don't have a thousand dollars just laying around. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. right? <laughs> no. So you make a thousand dollar vow for college education. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? So then we just start applying to universities because, of course, they said they wanted to go to college. So we apply to all these universities and um, we get some letters back and they really wanted to go to the University of Kentucky because here. Time out. <laughs> This is the most expensive. It is. It is. It's the most expensive, it's, most it's, it's prominent the, here in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. And in the nation. Yeah, you're right. So they were just set on that. And so we were excited. So I just said, let's apply. Of course, we applied to Kentucky State University here, too. Just a lot of different local schools that we applied to. Um, and I got back letters from several different places. You know, and I opened them and read them right away. But then I got a letter back from the University of Kentucky. And I just didn't want to open it. I wasn't sure. You know, it was just like, this is this is it. This is what they want. You know, Lord, here goes the cost. I'm going to see exactly how much this is going to cost mm. me. You know, for two of them, it's one thing to send one child to college. Mm. You know, that's what parents talk about. Oh, my son or my daughter's going to college. No, my son and daughter mm. are going to college. So, And they're smart kids. And they're just brilliant, sir. They were all year, really their whole high school career, honor roll, you know, A's and B's. Straight A's. Just, yep. So um, I, I finally opened this letter, and it's just... It just shocked us all. We were just, we were believing God, but we, he did exceedingly abundantly above we could have, whatever we could have asked. So what was in the letter? So in the letter, there was an $80,000 scholarship <laughs> <laughs> for the kids to go to the university. And along with their academic scholarship and finances from their academics when they were in high school, because they were in a local, they went to a local college here in Kentucky. If you stay in the state, they give you money for all the A's that you made. And here they are, you know, all their thousand wow. dollars of A's that they've made. Wow. So that money applied to everything. They ended up paying for the four, four years for both of them. Um, they actually got a stipend in return where they, you know, give them whatever was left out of their scholarship money back to them. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You're saying a thousand dollar vow. Sir. Yes. Two. Two. Yep. Twins. Two twins. Yes, sir. Got a four year yes. ride. Yep. With money coming back. Absolutely. Every semester, yep. That's supernatural. That is supernatural. I ain't never heard anybody <laughs> it's doing true. it. It's true. We never heard the like. UK. It's true. UK, yes. So so where are they in, in college now? So they are in their junior year, and I have a wall of certificates that say dean's list, dean's list, dean's mm. list. I mean, they're just excelling supernaturally. Mm. They're taught of the Lord. <laughs> and they're always in church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always in charge. They are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where now are you at in your job now? Okay, so I'm at. I'm still there at the the board of the board of education in our community. Um, and this is the funny part: they the kids get ready to go to college, um, and we just have my one vehicle. Which supernaturally, I didn't tell you this. I was in that car that a couple had gave me before, and then we got promoted into this huge SUV. Mm -hmm. That, and I'm saying promoted into it because I didn't pay for that one either. God gave us that car, Majesty. you know, <laughs> Majesty, exactly, a big beautiful truck, mm -hmm. you know. So. 
We're in this new vehicle, but the, I've got to go to work, and now the kids have to drive to Lexington oh, to college. They boy. can't get on the school bus anymore, oh, you know, boy. and I can't drive them down the street. So they drop me off at work maybe an hour early, and they take off to Lexington in the truck, you know, and then we're just like, oh, my God, you know, what are we going to do, Lord? Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. going to have to help us. And then my daughter, the youngest one that's still in high school, she'd walk from the high school to my job there at the Department of Education or at the Board of Education, and so she'd just come to the job, and we'd wait till somebody got off work, maybe one of our friends, you know, they work in the school system, they get off work and come pick us up and take us home and we'd wait on the kids. So, you know, that was kind of like the first couple of, I want to say maybe the first couple of months, because this was the end of, I guess, I'm not sure if it was 20, yeah, it would have been 2019, the end of, I guess, I gotta think about it. Yeah, because I graduated in 2019 and so 2019 they went to college. So at the end of 2019, getting ready to go into 2020, we're in this situation with the cars. So we, of course, you know, sowed a seed, wrote out scriptures. I was looking up scriptures. It says, Lord, you're my shield and buckler. I said, that sounds like a windshield and a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah, that's my car. So, you know, I told them we wrote these scriptures out. I'm serious, sir. I know you are. That's <laughs> we the first wrote I ever these... heard that revelation. <laughs> that's a new one. That's good. So we wrote these scriptures out, you know, and we sow our seed, we lock in and we believe we receive, you know, a vehicle for these kids. And, you know, it sounds like you can't believe it, but right after that, going into 2020, right before the end of the year, I have a video I made of it. Somebody gave the kids, both of them, cars. So Jada has her own vehicle. Vehicle. James has his own vehicle. Supernaturally given to them, sir. It's God, God is good. So I, we're here we're thinking maybe one more car and you all can ride together and, you know, they stay on campus even if somebody has classes. The other one just waits for them. But now here they, they are. Want their own they got their own cars. <laughs> so they've got their own vehicles. Me and my younger daughter, you know, go off to work and send her to school. And so things are going great. But then we hit 2020. Yeah. <laughs> and... We didn't know what was coming, but you have been preaching about vision manifestation. Mm -hmm. This is the year of your vision manifestation. Second Chronicles 2020. Second Chronicles 2020. So you gave us a challenge. You said God has, you know, spoke to you about this year and that if you're willing, whoever, whosoever will may come, mm -hmm. there's a 2020 seed that you can sow to get into, you know, step into what the vision is that God has for you. 2020 meaning 2000 meaning 2000 20 dollars <laughs> so this isn't just a thousand now it's two thousand i made that vow and paid it <laughs> at Sing the beginning of the year Sing yes sir along. yes sir at the beginning of the and year what happened by march the shutdown happened and this is no joke i said me and the kids we stood in the living room we locked hands and i told them things are not going to be the same everything's changing for us i went to work that day i think it was around the 15th or the 13th i feel like that in 2020 the that was a friday was on march 13th was on a friday i went to work and i got a call from another job to work back at the state but this is now at the state department that's over the education department so i'm still in the education field i get they give me the call i tell them i want to start that's the last day at that job because the shutdown happens and i get promoted into this new position that's what making more it's just now they said of course i was in that department that board of education which was over all the schools and i was with the superintendent this new job they said you'll be over the superintendent so i oh, have to answer goodness. to you so this is the department now over all of the education in kentucky so and that's the job you have now and that's the job i have and now. you can do it from your home and we can do it from home so a million and one ways to be a stay-at-home mom and i would have never thought you know i thought i had to be married to stay at now, home again now <laughs> that's this is why i wanted you to hear today's program mm -hmm. because yesterday we went through the hardship yeah this is how good god is Thank that he Lord. can turn it around mercy we just got a a, a, a few minutes left mm -hmm. here i want you to look in that camera and again pray for somebody some single parent there that needs that kind of of jolt uh they may have to sow a seed yeah you know, vow, Absolutely. decree a thing, yes, right? Yes, sir. So sad. look in that camera and pray whatever you got in your heart. All right. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I just speak, Lord, in agreement with these single parents. Lord, these single parents of these children, Lord, you said that you would provide and supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. Lord, but that's a stipulation if we're connected. Lord, I ask you to open their eyes. Let them see their connection. Let them grab a hold of that connection and not let it go. Lord, help them to see exactly how to 
manage their finances, supernaturally putting you first. And Lord, I know that when you, when they put you first, when they seek the things of God first, everything else is added unto them. Lord, I thank you for the supernatural breakout, even for the single mom right now, or the single father who's in the place of not even getting into the overflow, but coming out of that, that government stronghold, the system that is designed to keep people bound. We know that it's there to help, but it's, there's an enemy behind some of those things that are trying to keep people in poverty. I break that hold in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that they come out and they go up and they come in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, thank amen. Thank you, Lord. Mercy, thank Praise you, Jesus. thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow, this was so wow, fun. Wow. Thank well, you so much. I, I'm encouraged hearing uh, your testimony and, 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 and watching uh, you walk through all that and, and seeing what God has done with you now. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a thrill. Yeah. And uh, those of you watching, uh, there's a number at the bottom of the screen, our helpline. Mm -hmm. It's there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And these ministers that you, when you call, they, they were raised up just like Mercy. Mm -hmm. Mercy teaches our new creation class now. She, she sings on the worship team. Okay. She's a very big part of this church. And uh, the people that are going to answer that phone, they were raised up just like Mercy, just raised up under this mantle. And they know how to get things done by faith. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verse 4. <laughs> says, where the word of the king is, there, there is power. power. Be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. The Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7. So you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you.